Good morning. Welcome to the Daily Office, and thank you for joining me. This is Morning Prayer for Friday, March 11. It's the fourth week in Lent and week six in the Psalm cycle. And the scripture for this service, Psalm 102, Mark chapter 9, verse 2 to 13. Please join me in singing verse 5 of Psalm 66, part 2, by Isaac Watts, to the tune of New Britain. But God, your name be ever blessed, hath set my spirit free, nor turned away my poor request, nor turned your heart from me. Open my lips, my mouth shall declare your praise. Hear my prayer, O God, and let your let my cry come before you. Psalm 102, and please recite it with me. Hear my prayer, O God, and let my cry come before you. Hide not your face from me when I am in trouble. Incline your ear to me and answer me quickly. For my days are consumed like smoke, and my bones are burned like coal in a hearth. My heart is smitten and withered like grass, so that I forget to eat my bread. And because of my groaning, my bones cling to my skin. I'm like a pelican in the wilderness. I am like an owl of the desert. I lie awake and watch. I am like a lonely sparrow upon the housetop. My enemies reproach me all the day. And they that hate me are sworn against me. For I have eaten ashes for bread, and mingled my drink with my tears. Because of your indignation and your wrath, you have lifted me up and cast me down. My days are like a shadow that fades, and I am withered like grass. But you, O God, shall endure forever, and your remembrance to all generations." You shall rise and have mercy upon Zion, for now is the time to favor her. For your servants take pleasure in her stones, and even love her dust. And so the heathen shall fear your name, and all the rulers of the earth your glory, when you shall build up Zion and appear in your glory. You will regard the prayer of the destitute, and not despise their plea. This shall be written for the generations to come, so that the people yet unborn may praise you. For you have looked down from the height of your sanctuary. From heaven you behold the earth, to hear the groaning of the prisoner, to free those that are condemned to death, to declare your name in Zion and your praise in Jerusalem, when the people are gathered together and the nations to serve you. You weakened my strength on the way and shortened my days. O oh my God, do not take me in the midst of my days. Your years endure throughout all generations. In the beginning you laid the foundations of the world, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They shall perish, but you shall endure. All of them shall wear out like a garment. Like clothing you change them, and they shall be changed. But you are the same, and your years have no end. The children of your servants shall continue, and their children shall be established before you. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Hear my prayer, O God, and let my cry come before you. A reading from the Holy Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, beginning at verse 2. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzlingly white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who was talking with Jesus, who were talking with Jesus. And then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. 
Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. And suddenly when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. And so they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what this rising from the dead could mean. Then they asked him, Why do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? And he said to them, Elijah is indeed coming first to restore all things. How then is it written about the Son of Man that he is to go through many sufferings and be treated with contempt? But I tell you that Elijah has come, and they did to him whatever they pleased, as it is written about him. Here ends the lesson. Now let us offer our prayers and petitions. Please say the response after each verse. Defend us, and we shall shout for joy, for we put our trust in you. Merciful God, teach us your ways. Keep us from all sin today. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Feed us and lift us up forever. We sing of your power and mercy in the morning. You are our refuge in times of trouble. We place our hope in you, for with you is mercy and plenteous redemption. Every day we bless you. We praise your name forever and ever, and for all of your intentions. Our beloved, which art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us as we forgive others. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Let us pray. Unchanging and ever-living God, we praise you for your resplendent glory. Hear our prayers and grant our petitions. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God, from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, now and forever. Amen.